Sister Barbara. Hi, Sister Nikki. How are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> Busy trying to get things together for school. So. Oh, okay. Trying, <laughs> trying to get kids. I got kids um, that are about to get on with Brother Martin and. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right all right Devin yeah. can you take your um your computer oh, uh, can you put it on mute yep all right we're just waiting for a few more people to get on uh Deacon Briggs I can't see your video anymore oh okay now I can see you yeah all right, today we'll be studying Micah. So you can turn your Bibles to the book of Micah. And Sister Barbara, whenever you're ready, get back on, you can. Um, we'll be going to chapter six, Micah six. I'll put it in the chat as well. We're gonna do Micah six verses six through eight. Glad you all can join us, both of all of you who are here on Zoom and those who are coming in on Facebook Live. Hey, Mom, how you doing? Hey, I'm wonderful. How about you, baby? Doing good, doing well. We're in Micah 6, 8 tonight. Micah 6, actually 6 through 8. And um, it's in the chat as well. We have a couple more people coming on, so we can go ahead and get to Micah 6, 6 through 8. Welcome. Hello, Sister Honeycutt, Sister Kristen. Good evening. We're in Micah 6 through 6, verse 6 through 8 today. So you can turn right over there. How are you doing tonight? You trying to find it? How are you, Sister Honeycut? I am blessed. Thank you. How are you? Doing well. Yes. And you, Sister Kristen? How are you? Yeah. Doing good. Okay. Good. Good. Did you say Micah what? Chapter six, verse six through eight. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And can we get a volunteer to read it? Micah six, verse six through eight. I can read if you would like. Sure. All right. Um, so Actually, just, start, just start with um, verses six through seven. Okay. And then with we'll what with what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Thank you. Would someone go ahead and lead us in prayer? Almighty God, we just um, thank you for this word tonight in Maca, Maca. We thank you for the people who have joined. 
We thank you for the pastor who will be leading this Bible study. We thank you for um, opening our hearts and our eyes so that we may hear this word from you, Lord. Lord, help us to um, practice in our hearts so that we can use it in our lives and tell people about you to save, to save them and to save their soul. Lord, we just um, thank you for this day which you've made. We this and be glad in it. We just love you, Lord, and we love this Bible study, and we can't wait to get started. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Let's say somebody likes you. What would be something you would like that person to do to show you that they like you? Uh, to be open and honest and tell me that they like me. Mm-hmm. Okay. What else? I, would, I would like for them to respect me. Mm -hmm. No concern. Um, when there is something going on, or just to listen to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, was there a time when someone liked you and they did something that they thought you would like, but you didn't? Can you think of a time of that that happened? And could you anybody be willing to share? <laughs> they thought you would be impressed, but you thought, oh, nope, <laughs> that's not for me. <laughs> I know back in the day, sometimes people would say, they, they like to say they want to get your phone number and you might say, uh, no thanks. <laughs> Mr. Honeycutt, what were you thinking? I have to share this one thing about, um, you know, my, my daughter and, and, and I. So I like to work in the yard and um, she likes to get things done. And so, The, the plane doesn't always meet because some days I don't feel like working in the yard. But she sees that there, there is work that needs to be done, so she'll go ahead and do it. And then one day I said, you know, she's a very busy person. She works 11 to 7, and she goes and takes care of her grandson, and then she goes back to work again. She's trying to run three houses, hers, mine, and her daughter's. You know, this is where she's helping. And so I said, um, I can't tell you how bad that makes me feel when you're out there working and I'm not able to do it. I'm not able to keep up with you. Mm -hmm. And she, when I said it like that, she got the message and she just stopped doing it. And she let me do it at my own pace. Mm, okay. All right. Anyone else? Could you share? I see some more people connecting in. Good to see all, you all and glad you're joining us. We're talking about um, what are some things, where's a time when someone thought that they were, they, they liked you and they wanted to know that they liked you, but you weren't impressed. You didn't really like what they were doing to show you that. I know Sister Mary Lou, I see that you're trying to connect on audio. Good to see you. And Sister Donna, Sister Bates. What was the time when somebody thought, um, you thought that, um, no, that's not, not really what I wanted? When was the last time that happened? No, not the last time, but just any time. When was the time when somebody said that they liked you or they seem to be interested in you, but you didn't like the way that they were presenting themselves to you or that something that they were doing that they thought you would like. Sister Honeycutt was just sharing one where somebody was trying to help and that she wanted to do it, you know, things to be done in a different way, right, Sister Honeycutt? Yeah. <laughs> so any, any other thoughts of that happening to you, any of you? I, uh, I spent 10 years with somebody that I uh, 
I thought, you know, that not so much like, but loving, but then, you know, kind of realizing that it wasn't the kind of person I wanted when the true colors show. Mm, okay. So when you saw those colors, those colors weren't the kind you liked, huh? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a while and then you get to see things that people weren't presenting at first. And so you thought you liked them, but then they, they showed some, some other sides to themselves. Yep. As we get to this text here, um, you just read, we are in Micah 6, verse 6 through 8. And um, can we have another person read it again so we can hear what was said here? Because we're, we're seeing in this text. What are you reading from? Micah 6. What are you reading from? <coughs> Micah. Hear me? Micah? Yeah. yeah, Micah 6, verse 6 through 8. We're, it's in the chat as well. Michael, my, Micah, chapter, chapter six. 6. Oh, 6. And then verses 6 through 8. 6 through 8. Okay. I don't know where I got another first thing from. Okay. Michael, as you're getting to this text, he's one of those prophets who did more what they call foretelling of current truth than foretelling of future events. He did some, but he talked about the current truth a lot, what was going on with the people at the time. And God used people like Micah to help to monitor the health of worship. So you're going to see some questions that people are asking in within this context of Micah where they are asking these questions that some of us heard already, but we'll hear again that you we're going to think about what, what you think about these types of questions. I want you as we um, read these questions to observe what's happening. What 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 do you notice about them? Okay, so uh, will somebody read those first two verses again? I'll read it. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offers, offerings with calves a year old? That was six and seven. No, wait a minute. No, wait. Um, will the Lord be thousands of rams with the 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruit of my body for the sins of my soul? Okay, so let's look back at verse six. What did you notice? What, were, what was the first type of ways that he talked about that the people were talking about coming before the Lord? Bow down. Bowing down. Yes, shall I bow down before the exalted Lord? Yes, and then, and then what else? Make an offerings and exalt him. Yes, bowing down, exalting God, and then offering burnt offerings. Mm -hmm. Now, these types of things, do they seem like, for us, we know that they would be unusual. We don't come to our worship services bringing those things. But to the people in these days, in the times of Micah, do you think that those seem like Usual or unusual types of things? Usual. Yeah, so those are more usual types of things for them mm -hmm. that they should bring. So let's look at the way things progress though. Verse seven in the NIV version, says, will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams and mm -hmm. 10,000 rivers of olive oil? So I offer my firstborn for my transgression the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. What do you notice about these questions? What do you notice about the, the types of things that they're talking about offering before the Lord? Something that means a lot to them. 
Mm. Like their firstborn. Yeah, that means a whole lot to them, you would hope, right? Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> and what about the other things that they offer? Or were they were talking about offering? The fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. Okay, so that offering, they were talking about offering that firstborn for, which is the fruit of their body, um, or, you know, saying that's someone that came from them for the sin of their soul. So they're saying, okay, is that something that you want me to offer? My firstborn for my sin? What else in that verse earlier? About the rivers of oil. How much rivers? Thousands. Thousands. Ten thousand. Ten thousands. So we went from thousands of ram to ten thousand rivers of olive oil. Now, how do these compare to the things that they were mentioning in the first verse that we read, verse six? Still making the, the first one seemed to be tokens or smaller, um, was considered smaller offerings um, that one would, would give. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem as, as big or, you know, as expensive, you know, as the ones that we're talking about now. Mm -hmm. It seems smaller in value. Yeah, the the one in chap in the verse six seem more small in value, and the bigger the bigger in value was the ones in verse seven. Okay, so um, now this, <clears throat> these kinds of questions that they have here are following up on what was said in verse three, where it says, "My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened?" You? answer now does this does this response that they give in verse six seem like a adequate answer to that question when if the lord it said at the beginning here earlier it said the lord had a case against his people he has a lodging he's lodging a charge against israel and then he says in verse three of this same chapter michael six my people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. And so they come with these questions after he talks about some of the things that God has done for them, um, how he br brought them out of Egypt, redeemed them from the land of slavery. Um, that was verse four. And, and then Moses, he sent of them, Moses and Aaron. And, and, then, um, and then he tells them some examples to remember of, how um, some some wrong responses, Balak, king of Moab, and Balaam. And then um, they, he said that they remember this journey that they had so they can remember his righteous acts. And so they answer his question in verse six. And they say, um, they say, what shall I come before the Lord? Do you think this is an adequate answer to what God is saying? What have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. Mr. Kristen, you're nodding your head. No, why do you think it's not a good answer? No, because that's something they should automatically want to do is to come and bow down to him. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like show res it doesn't seem like they have any respect mm -hmm. for the Lord our God. Yeah, yeah. I just think about it. If we, if God, we were to see Jesus, I think the first thing I know I would do was bow down. Yeah, yeah. And so, in the book of Micah, we see that they have been un showing their unfaithfulness to the Lord, um, and even that's when God is saying to them, you know, that's why God is giving a charge against them. But then they are not showing respect to God. They're they're they're, they're not responding with 
an appropriate response to what God deserves after he's been so faithful. He's showing some of the faithful acts he's done for them. And then in verse six, they, they start talking about these types of sacrifices that they think that they think will be pleasing to him. Um, and these were commonly accepted sacrifices that were perfect sacrifices and according to the law of the covenant. And so it seems like you know, if you weren't considering what the question was, you might think, oh, there's it's a genuine effort to please God. But he is showing that they, they, the, the implication of the way that they're responding is not showing that they have seen how their acts are really um, in error, how the big, the problem with what they do and how deeply it, it is the issue. And that's why God is bringing this charge. So, um, so we see that this, they, 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 it seems like as Kristen was in, um, showing, it seems more like they, you know, they're not showing respect, it's showing that they're not grateful, right? There's, there, mm -hmm. there's, they seem to be showing that they're like obligated to do this towards God as opposed to doing it out of thanksgiving. So let's see. What Then when we looked at verse 7, we saw that it seemed like even more extreme, right? They were talking about these rivers of <laughs> rivers of olive oil, 10,000, and then thousands of rams. So they're asking, what, what do you think about that verse? Do, what do you think how, uh, about the, the, those types of questions? Does it seem like they're being sincere in the way that they're asking them? And, and, and they are really planning on doing those types of things? It's, it, it shows me that they really said. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a major setting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Um, so yeah, and and I think yeah, I think they're just throwing it out there to see what would God say. Like, yeah, that's what I want. You know what I mean? They're saying, "I'll give you all of this." What do you think? You know what I mean? Um, what do you mean by that? You said, what was well, well, he, they're saying ten thousands, like they want to really impress him, or they're actually asking if, to him if that's okay with him, mm. or should it be more? Asking for his favor. They wanted his favor. Mm. They get this in. Yeah, they want his favor, but they're but but they missed the boat. Right. So, what? They totally missed the boat. They're focusing on what they almost like needing to buy his his love or, or to mm -hmm. give him material things as opposed to uh, uh, doing his will and doing his work and love your neighbor as yourself, stuff like that. It just seemed like they missed the boat. They're focusing on what can I buy or, you know, give him like he like he cares about that kind of stuff and yeah. he does not right they give even an example of something so extreme like their firstborn child firstborn, yeah That's you know the way god does mm -hmm. things he doesn't accept mm -hmm. a sacrifice of a a child to, to appease him and it seems like they're talking like ways like the uh people who did idol worship would do for their false gods uh, one of the kings during the time that Micah lived was Ahaz. Um, and it shows that at the beginning of this book, where you see that Ahaz was was in the middle of the, the kings that were listed there. And Ahaz was not a good king. He was one of the ones who worshiped these false gods. And he actually did sacrifice some of his children to mm -hmm. Uh, one of the the gods, the lowercase g gods, and in hopes to receive something from them, um, but that's not how God works. He doesn't want us to give up our children and kill them in fires to give to Him. Mm -hmm. 
conquering. And so yeah. him even given that, posing that question as if he, God is like these other false gods is showing that they, they're really missing the boat here. And mm -hmm. the types of things that they're saying, they're not getting to the heart of things. So now let's read to the, let's, let's look at the next verse and, and see what God does require. Would somebody read Micah 6 8? What? Micah 6 8. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, show thee, O oh man, what is good. He has shown thee, O oh man, what is good. And what does does and what does the Lord require of thee? Mm -hmm. Where am I? Okay. But to to do justly and to love love mercy and walk humbly with the with the God, with, with our God, with our God. Yes, yeah. You want me to go on? Nope, that's it. Okay. So I can't see where for nothing. You, you, <laughs> is, is that all right? Yes, he has shown you, and the NIV says, Oh mortal, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you to act justly and to love us? Yeah. To walk mm -hmm. humbly with your God. Mm -hmm. Now we see that some of these things are all of these things are so different. different posing as their questions for what they should do for before God. Mm -hmm. First few couple of verses, we see that they were so different. And so they, we see that when we come into worship, we need to do a heart check. Are we trying to bring something to God and this, you know, almost, so to speak, do a tick off and say, yep, I brought it, done. But God is saying, I want something deeper, right? He's, he's wanting something more. And so we, we, should, we ought not to come into the worship service or wherever we are worshiping, at home, in our car, wherever we're going, and say, what can I give to the Lord? Would the Lord be pleased with this? No, that, that that's not showing the the um you know as as far as especially if we're just throwing stuff out there to give 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 it just and but not really giving of our hearts right right mm. so they're just focused on some actions of stuff and God is focused on what <coughs> doing that oh, from their heart acts. yeah oh, acts yes. from their hearts. And what, what types of actions, um, well, those previous actions, do you think those actions would have set them right with God, having, you know, brought those offerings to God, even the ones that are at the beginning that seem normal in the time? Do you think mm -hmm. that would have set them right at the, with God? No. Not of it. No. Not, not, not in and out of themselves. No. 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 Okay. And especially, you know, not just the, the 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 second group of things in verse seven seemed to me like us. They seemed so extreme, like they, it was even maybe a hyperbole. Like they're just the, the like a metaphorically speaking, like rivers, thousands, ten thousand. Mm. <laughs> uh, you know, like I don't think anybody really planned on bringing that much to God. So they're almost <laughs> just being. You know, just going on and exaggerating. Well, is there anything that's going to be good enough almost for God? You know, that seems kind of like what they're saying there. But um, but that's not, you know, we, as we said, that any of those things, even if it was real, that is not going to be pleasing to God. God looks deeper. He looks at our hearts. And so... Um, Let's look at some of these things that we read here in this verse, chapter, in, in verse 8 of Micah 6. It says, what does the Lord require of you? These are things, as it said, was that was good. It says to act justly 
What does it mean to act justly? What do you think that means? To do, to do right. Mm -hmm. Justly means to do right, to do right, and do love right. mercy. What what way? Do the right thing. Do right. Treat people well, like with the Lord. What the Lord says. Mm -hmm. Do what the Lord says. Yes, like if He says Treating to love. Well, we, if He says to love one another, we have to love one another. We we can't pick and choose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it means that you can't just just say it just to say it. You have to have some work behind what you're saying. So, so to whom do we act justly? One another. One another. Everyone. Yeah. You can't pick and choose. Well, there's also some people who are more. Uh, the ones who are more prone to receiving the injustices, right? And so if you're doing, if there's somebody who is less well off and you know that that is the case, you can do something. If you're in a position to do something to help them, then you're doing justly. You're doing justice. You're um, acting justly, right? So, so yeah, for those Help who the poor and the needy, those who are in need, those who are, um, and what were you going to say, Sister Kristen? What you just said. Mm -hmm. To help yes, the yes. need, help the poor. Help the poor. Yeah. <laughs> to be there and not expect anything back. Amen. Yes. And to not be judgmental of those who are in need and, you know, yeah. because there, there seems to kind of be that, like, knowing somebody's in need, but then doing to help, but also to, in doing so, of kind of, like, having respect and showing respect, even though they're not as well off as somebody else might be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what could happen is that we could be going to worship and then we act unjustly towards other people. We could say, hey, I'm going to give. And then I'm going to treat this person in any kind of way. <laughs> or I'm just going to ignore and just walk by and not see what's happening and not show compassion, not show, um, not take any action. Just, I did something. I went in, I praised the Lord, and then I went about my business. Amen. God wants us to do more than that. He wants us to, we, we know what uh, Jesus said, as we even consider the, the next one, where it talks about love, mercy. Um, what do you think that would be like? To love mercy. To admit when you're wrong, to learn from it, ask for forgiveness, whether it's from Jesus or that other person. And you also have to forgive others mm -hmm. and show grace and mercy at all times. Mm -hmm. Well, what are your thoughts? thought about that part of it you know sometimes we may do something but to love mm. what do you think about that part of it that's, that's right you know i i often think when i see a homeless person on the corner and i'm driving by i'm always torn with that do i show mercy or do I just ignore the person? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's difficult for me because in my mind, I think they're probably just by drugs or something. Um, even if they're out there with all their kids, you know. 
But then after I leave, I say, you know, I think God wanted me to do something, take some kind of action. So I'm a little, um, I'm conflicted with that because there's so many people out on the corners nowadays, you know, it just, so do you show mercy or do you just drive, keep on driving? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't know if there's a simple answer. Because mm. sometimes you can see somebody with a cigarette in their hand and you're like, uh, I don't want to help them to buy the next pack. Right. But, right. you know, could I help with um, feeding them? Or, you know, you may just choose to go get them something to eat. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to do it if you feel that way. Or something to drink. It's hot outside, you know? Yeah. yeah. So there's that's what my, ways that's what my husband used to do. My husband used to, uh, he, had a, he had a thing for the um, homeless. But he never would give them the money. He would take them to buy a sub and a coffee and, you know, chips if they wanted. And then he would go on his way. Mm. I want them in my car. Mm. <laughs> I don't want them to say, <laughs> what do you do? Just say, come, come get in the car. I'm going to take you for, I, I was at McDonald's one day. This, this lady came up and said, I am hungry, would you buy me a sausage sandwich? So I said, sure. So I bought her the sausage sandwich. And the lady said, you're really not going to do that, are you? I said, yeah, I am. She asked for a sausage sandwich. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to her. She said, she's only going to go sell it. So, so I was like. <laughs> I don't think that that you need to worry about too. <laughs> so you can't go to McDonald's. Even McDonald's, like in the when you're in Boston, in the it's like, they're at like the window there, you know. So I think probably you know, like Pastor Nikki was kind of saying, there's a lot of different ways to show mercy to someone. Because if you're concerned about stuff like that, maybe it's like, okay, maybe I'll make a donation to an organization. You know, maybe. You know, you'll do something in some fat form of fashion that will help that population. Sometimes, I mean, there, there used to be <clears throat> often people out in front of CVS. I used to see the same woman all the time, and I would just talk to her. And then one day she asked me to pray for her, but they were mm -hmm. usually out there bumming money. So I think, you know, I think it's really people's comfort zone with all the different needs of what people have. If it's something you feel you could do for that person you do if not then you know you just kind of i guess kind of have to be creative because it does there is a lot out there and it can tug it tug at your heart mm -hmm. like i i know for like myself in oh when i show mercy and stuff like that and seeing somebody who's homeless or you know an addict that you know, it looks like they're struggling on the side of the road is kind of that if I feel it in, in, in like the pit of my stomach that yeah. I'm supposed to do something for them. Um, like after I go to like pass by them, sometimes I'll get that gnawing feeling in the pit of my stomach. Like, okay, it's a guilt. It's feeling guilty of I was supposed to do something. Um, and most of the times that I've had that feeling, it, it's usually I end up turning back around it and, you know, asking, okay, is there anything I can do that can help you in some type of way? And mm -hmm. like, I know I grew up in Boston. So some of the people that I actually ran into that, you know, they had like a sadness on their face and it was just really is like company looking for company in, in not for somebody to answer their struggles, but, you know, like Sister Marsha said, you know, um, for some of them, it's just for asking for prayer or company, or it's not yeah. so much for money or, or looking for some type of materialistic out of somebody. It's, it's showing and giving somebody the time of day, um, so to speak, mm -hmm. that ends up changing the way that 
you know, hope for them that they have mm. inside of their heart in one way or another. Mm. So that that's, yeah, my kind of take on that. Mm. Mm-hmm. My brother is homeless. You can walk around Trenton and you, most people know who he is. Some of them, they are mentally ill and the places they stayed in like to keep them drugged up all the time and they don't have a life. Some of them just, just wants to be out there and just live among people. And sometimes there is no help that you can give a person, but sometimes just to leave them alone. But one thing I can say about he loves the church over there. He, everybody in Taunton knows who my brother is. And they will tell me, I saw your brother, he's doing fine. He loves the Winter Street Baptist Church. You find him over there cleaning, making, fixing, or fixing something or doing something. So all people who are out there are not just on drugs or anything. They just have mentally problems and there's nowhere for them to go. And when you put them in these places, they don't have any life inside. So they find a way not to, not to be in those places. And the best thing to do is, is not to give them money, but offer them something, see how they doing or whatever, just talk. My brother would take his money and feed the other homeless people. And then for the rest of the month, he's without funds. So you don't really know why they're there. All of them are not, not on drugs to be on drugs. Some of them got addicted to drugs by them drugging them up all the time to keep them not moving in the places that they were in. Mm. Mm-hmm. And he's good for giving people his, he lost a place because he thought it was his job. He sucks his thumb to help somebody that's less fortunate than him. So that's why we just need to pray and let God lead you to, to whatever you need to do for a person when you come up on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. About, as we go, when we think about how these connect, um, yeah. I thought about uh, the Good Samaritan in, in that how he was a person, even though the people who were were considered the worshipers of God who would would have been the ones who would normally have um we would think of the religious people they passed by the man who was by on the you know who had been robbed and was mm. left for dead basically on the side of the road mm. but then the good Samaritan as we call him the one who helped him, he lifted him up and put him on, um, you know, put him on the, the, the animal and so that he could go back and take him to the housing, to the, you know, hotel, motel, whatever. And, um, and, you know, he's the one that bandaged his wounds and, and had the, the, the hotel person care for him at, and paid so that he could be continued to be cared for the innkeeper mm. and um mm. and that's the one who, who was the neighbor they said um they said which of these three do you think was the neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the rock mm. uh, in, in luke chapter 10 and then he says, the expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And so it kind of connects it because these Samaritans were considered the people uh, the, of Israel, the you know people. Hello? That were the Jewish people's. Hi, I'm going to call you back in a little bit. I'm going to meet you. And, um, but the, he, the Samaritan, though he was considered the, the, the enemy, was also the one who helped. And so he showed mercy by not hold it against him. He showed it by choosing to help him instead and, um, and doing things that those who would be considered the religious people chose not to do. And so we want to be ones that our true worshipers who do have mercy, who do help, who do um, serve and 
as Sister Bates said, we can be prayerful about it and consider, you know, what ways we can serve. Mm -hmm. For that man in that story, it was pretty obvious that he needed somebody to to care for him, that he could be dead if he if somebody didn't help him. You can't just leave him beside um, on the side. So for us, that might be call 911. Don't just wait for the next person to do it. Don't just think, oh, there's all these people around. Somebody must have already done it. Call our sister. Get that food. Get, you know, stop by. See, are they okay? You know, whatever it may be. Um, if it was some more urgent thing. But then, you know, these other things where we talked about various ways that we can help. And, and I thought about this love piece of loving the mercy. Really mm -hmm. want have mercy, really wanting to extend that forgiveness, wanting to extend that care for others instead of wanting to put walls up, wanting to extend um, in ways that can be a blessing and, and that can show that we are a neighbor and that we do care. And then the last, and the last one, it, it talked about walking humbly with our God. What do you think that looks like? What does that mean? <laughs> I think it's just kind of. We don't want to be fucked up about it. We want to be able to do it and and. Uh, let them receive it and not, um, like I said before, wait for something to come back to you. Do it because the Holy Spirit told you <clears throat> what you need to do. Mm -hmm. What else? Walking humbly with our God. Mm. I was going to say that, you know, you just to. Uh, recognize that i mean you may be in a position to help other people and do things and you know um god may have blessed you with certain things but in terms of walking humbly is to recognize i mean you could that you know there you know but you know go that could be you you know um not to be um thinking that you're better than other people um you know and just to not to be bragging you know, just not to be taught, you know, just if you're going to walk and serve God, it's just to, you know, quietly do that because that's what's on your heart. That's what you're doing, but not to be bragging about, you know, different things that you do. Mm -hmm. You know, I did this, I did that. And, you know, I got this, I got that. But just to be humble and recognize that, you know, your situation could change in a minute too. And you were in a different place probably at some point too. <laughs> and being a blessing to others. Mm. What else? Walk humbly with our God. Also to be respectful of the people we have been talking about to make sure because God loves them. Any, if God loves them, we should love them. We should show love for everyone. Amen. As Jesus commands it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we do these things because of Jesus commanding us and knowing that, um, you know, so we're not just bragging about ourselves and what we're doing, but who are we doing it for, right? Mm -hmm. Recognizing that we're in God's presence, that God is the one who um, is, is watching over us and that we, we serve the Lord. And, we, we put aside our pride and walk humbly with the Lord. So it's something that we need to put off so we can put on this hum humility, put off mm -hmm. this um, puffing ourselves up and even the way they were, you know, how, how did they, how they were responding to God and, and, and to their own sin, recognizing that, God sees that's part of our humbly before God, recognizing that the sin in our lives is 
pleasing to God, when we choose to not walk with, to show mercy, when we choose to not um, do justly, when we choose to just focus on ourselves and try to just give and give and, and not really have our heart in it, those things are not showing our humility before God. And so we to be able to walk humbly by recognizing that God does see and God cares how we treat one another and God loves us and wants us to be um, in right relationship with him and mm -hmm. walk, walk in that knowledge, walk in that humility okay. of the Lord. And I think it also has a component in there where we need to uh, remember uh, from whom our blessings flow and make sure we give God the credit mm -hmm. that he so rightfully deserve, deserves. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Matthew 23. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew 23, 23, woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. Mm -hmm. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. So yes, yeah, bring your tithes to the storehouse, but also God. Mm -hmm. To, mm. to focus on the more mm. important things or give abundantly out of what God has blessed you with, right? As it says in the New Testament, basically. Um, but justice, mercy, and faithfulness should mm. not have been neglected. That's the more important matter of the law. Mm -hmm. And so let's, let's think about that. Let's think about um, this reminder that God's people often need, that it's our hearts, not our actions, that's, that's right. the test that's right. of our faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Why do you think we need that reminder so much? <laughs> Human beings with flaws. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Human beings with flaws. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're a mess. <laughs> mm -hmm. We want the easy way out, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we thought in that way. We think, oh, let me do what's easy. <laughs> mm. Quick. It don't take much, much of our hearts to do sometimes, right? Mm. Yeah. We, we, we start getting self-centered and not thinking of God's ways at times. And so God... <laughs> Yeah. brings up these reminders to help us that mm -hmm. um, yes he wants the action but he wants it from our heart of, yeah. of love a heart that is our faithfulness to him that is merciful that is loving mercy that does justice and walks humbly before mm -hmm. the lord so in what areas of your life do you go through the motions rather than put in the hard work of preparing your heart for worship? Are there some adjustments that you think you might need to make this week even? Mm -hmm. <laughs> a heart of pure and genuine obedience? This week. <laughs> this week. You know, I would just say, well, at least for me anyway, um, you know, you can get busy with stuff mm -hmm. and not take the time, you know, to really be in the word and, you know, whether it's meditating, you know, different times during the week, you know, certain mm -hmm. things that, you know, leading up to that can just prepare you. You know, I think, you know, for me, it's just trying to sometimes just put some things aside, you know, to take that time to do that because it does matter overall um, to do that on a regular basis. So that's something that I've been thinking about. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So true. Yeah. 
<laughs> what else? I'll start putting in my time. I like to do it in the mornings. <laughs> I, I have a, I have a, a system that I do mm -hmm. every morning. Sometimes I'm running late. I will not go to bed until I do it. I go back and, and do whatever I was going to do that morning. I make sure that every day I put in what I'm supposed to put in. And those special times with the Lord, it's just me and I and the angels. And we have a good time. And that's when he speaks to me. Uh, so I'm having a problem. That's when things Things show me how to be calmer instead of knowing everything and trying to get someone to listen to my point. I've learned how to just stand still, just be still a little. So mm -hmm. you can speak better to someone that you're not puffing up. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Sometimes he tells you, just leave it alone and let me handle it. And it comes mm -hmm. out better. But I do that every single day. I will not let that day go by or time go by without me doing that particular thing every single day. Amen. Every day. Amen. Every day. <laughs> well. Every day. Anyone else think that there's some ways that you could dig into this more in your own life? It's doing justice. Loving mercy. That's right. Walking humbly with the Lord. Make you calmer. I just make one comment because I'm sitting here as I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, you know, when you're working, you know, you're interacting with people that are, let's say, less fortunate than you and um, you're trying to just be there and meet their needs, it definitely, it in and of itself, can humble you and it just provides an opportunity to practice these things you know, mm -hmm. that we're talking about, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we could take more opportunities as they come or as we have them planned even. We we have things like the food pantry and and um, we have other things, you know, you you you're doing things working with the people with substance abuse and and then there's other people that we could interact with in other ways that mm -hmm. just the Lord places in our paths um, as well. And we can think about, hmm, I wonder, you know, I'll, I think about other areas and other aspects on this like realm of uh, things. Sometimes it's not just the actual act of giving somebody something but also thinking about, well, what are the things that cause them to be in this place that they're in right now? Mm. So how can we get in those areas too? Mm. Uh, try to help justice to help prevent some right. of these things from happening or, or help address them so that they don't happen even more mm. for that person or Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so that sometimes those things can require more time, more effort, more thought, more coordination and advocacy. You know, there might be some people that we may need to to um, speak to someone else about what is going on, so that and and you know, one of the things they talked about even in the um, group of people who are running for council, they were talking about, we need more people to do it. Mm. You, know, there's, you can't just depend on the one, the two, the three, mm -hmm. the five, mm -hmm. the 10, or whatever. You know, it's kind of like that bystander effect. Sometimes people are just bystanders. They think, oh, somebody else will do it, like I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And we all need to be involved. Mm. Whatever way it can be, Deacon mm. uh, can Briggs. I know your your knees are not doing as well these days, but Deacon Briggs could be praying for them, right? He could be praying mm -hmm. for them as we as we work and mm. and seek to to do the justice, right? We might not be able to actively go get up and go and 
mm-hmm. advocate himself, but maybe, maybe, you know, some people who might not be as active, they might be able to pick up the phone or, or some people might be able to write an email and say, hey, I think, you know, mm. this would be a great thing for us to do as a community. And I would like to be involved in whatever way I can and, you know, whatever it is. Uh, <clears throat> Other ideas of, of what you, you're thinking about, how can we do justice more and show that we love mercy for mm. people who are having a hard time or people who may not be the ones who are, are, are um, you know, the ones we would normally align with, but they are ones that we want to show that they're our neighbor because we want to show mercy or do justice. That's right. Sometimes you just have to move stuff out of the way. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> to, to work together and 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 and, and um, <clears throat> meet, with, meet with each other and and get together and go do it. You know, so mm. some of these things we can brainstorm some stuff and we can do the, them. And sometimes it's like, oh, while we're doing some things, it could evolve and and add more because we see, oh, this is another need. This is another way um, that God is showing us. So we could be prayerful and know that God is with us and will help us. All right, so we can commit to seeking out these opportunities as as, uh, the Lord shows us both individually and as a church and as the body of Christ, wherever we are. I know, Mom, you're in uh, Georgia, so <laughs> you will be doing it uh, from afar, but you know, it's still, yes. still yes. wonderful to for us all. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> all right. Um, so as we, we draw to a close, are there any other comments or questions on what we've been discussing here in Micah 6, verse 6 through 8. All right. Okay. I don't know. Mom, are you looking for something? No, I was just trying to look and see what we're having. Habakkuk next week. Oh, Habakkuk, yeah. Um, let me see. Oh no, Nahum. Nahum. I'm Nahum. Oh, okay. I skipped too far. Okay. I'm glad I said something. Nahum. And it's only three chapters to read the whole thing. Nahum. Okay. So let us um, prepare to close in prayer. Sister Bates, would you like to close us up in prayer? Sure. Okay. Any prayer requests? Um, I do. Um okay. I actually have um, (laughs) my granddaughter's other grandmother just had surgery yesterday morning. Um, She did a gastric sleeve surgery. Um, I'm asking for prayers because she's having complications from the surgery, like vomiting up blood. Um, They're looking to possibly transfer her because she's not doing very well. Um, So if we can just pray that um, she is able to pull through and that the doctors are able to find out why she's having the complication she is. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, continue to pray for me. Um, the, the pain is lessening, thank God. I went to the dentist today and I had a little mouth surgery. And um, I just need this toe to heal right too. Thank you. Your heels, right? Yeah, the heels bother me, but um, I don't know if you know, I, I broke a, a chip, the bone in my big toe on the left front, on the left foot. Okay, feet. Anyone else? I have a praise report and a um, uh, prayer request. Um, praise report for my niece, Whitney. She was feeling a little under the weather and thought maybe she might have had COVID. And so we... We were texting each other, um, so we just said we'd all we're gonna pray for her, and I just told her, you know, you know, you're in my prayers, 
And she said she was going to find out the results today. And so she, I texted her right before Bible study. That's why I was a little late. And she said it came back negative. So I told mm -hmm. her, Praise God. God. Um, she said she was actually feeling better today. Um, so we just thank God that she um, was fine. And then just continue prayer for Sybil and her family. I guess they want to try to move her. Yeah. So they're hoping that that will be able to happen so she can get better. They want to have better care, I guess. So they want her to go to Boston. Okay. So I guess her son from California is supposed to be, supposed to be out here trying to make that happen. Okay. Anyone else? I have a praise report. <clears throat> I went to the castle doctor yesterday and he had a smile on his face and those two things that was in my chest they had shrunk down amen amen, amen. amen. yes oh. yes he had a big smile amen. in his face yeah amen. praise god praise god mm -hmm. father god we come to you lord humble as we can be father god thank you lord for another blessed day Thank you, Lord, giving us the time and the knowledge to be together, Lord, that we learn something more and more every, every day, because we will not learn it all to help us through another week. Lord, we, these prayers that that's went up to you, Lord, Barbara, ask for prayer for her children, grandmother, Lord. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus, Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, for Sister Roz, Lord, Deacon Roz, Lord, by her feet. We pray, Heavenly Father, for Donna's niece, Lord, and the other prayer, I didn't hear it all, but we have asked you, Lord, to gather in this here, this here group, Lord, tonight. You have heard everything that's been said in your name. We thank you, Lord, for the lessons that, that we learn every single week, Lord, and, and, and help yeah. us to apply these things that we're learning, Lord. Lord, we pray for everyone yeah. at Beacon, Lord, that's on the prayer list that's not here tonight. Lord, we pray for the families, Lord, that's, that's grieving right now. So many of them, Lord, has had more, more than they think they can stand. We pray, Lord, for every member of our church and families, Lord, is going through these hard times. We lift up our, our homeless people, Lord. We lift up those, Lord, that is bound by drugs. Lord, give us the idea or something that we can do, Lord, that can help those that we know or to help those that we run in contact with. Lord, we thank you for another blessed day. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all the gifts and love you have given us so we can share with others. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for those who are sick that's fighting this COVID. And we pray, Lord, that you would speak to the hearts of people to wear masks, Lord, so our children will not become the ones that's going to end up in all the hospitals. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you right now for all the things you're going to do. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. I thank you, Lord. Okay. Amen. 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 And it is done. Amen. 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 Oh, good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night, night Mom. Good night, good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. Good night. Bye.